It is with sadness that we are here yet again highlighting the injustices that members of the black community face when they come into police contact. And it is with sadness that there has been another death, but a high profile death this time of Dahlia Atkinson. As black people, every single form of disproportionality affects us when it comes to police contact. In that case, it was, if you're black, you are three times more likely to be tasered than anyone else. But you know what? We're good people. We're good Christian people. We are good people of faith. So, before I go on, I'm going to ask for a moment's silence for Dahlia Atkinson and his family. And we're going to say a short prayer for his family. So please, let's just observe a moment's silence. And we'll say a prayer for his family. And we will continue. Father, we just want to thank you for this gathering today. Father, the Bible says that every man is equal in your sight. But we have a society at times that highlights the differences in such a way that it costs some of the people in our community their life. Father, we thank you for the contribution that Dahlia Atkinson made as a footballer to our lives. Father, we thank you for the contributions that he made as a community. And right now, we just ask you, Father, to strengthen his family so that the emotional roller coaster and the journey for answers, the closing of ranks, the closing of doors, that the blockages will be cleared in that case. But we ask you to ensure that the love that binds that family together continues and let us all share our love in support of that family so that they may reach a conclusion and on today's proceedings Lord we just ask you to ensure that we continue to conduct ourselves in the dignified way that we do and we prove to those who seek to oppress us that we are better than they are because we believe and trust in you as we all say Amen. As we all say, Amen. that's a bit better. I see people not wanting to make noise when we pray. And prayer is an important part of our lives. This week, the Kings of Burrell family have been told the CPS require a further two weeks to make a decision on a file that they have had since October 2015. Shame. No Shame. justice. No peace. The facts are at the end of the day, that's totally uns unsatisfactory. Kingsley was detained under one, Section 136 of the Mental Health Act in March 2011, the 27th of March 2011. Kingsley died within 72 hours of being detained. Kingsley, a fit black man, a fit black man with no injuries, was covered with injuries. Kingsley was beaten. This is all in the public domain. It came out at the inquest. Kingsley was denied proper medical assistance. Kingsley had a blanket placed over his head as though he was a dog and not a human being. I sat and I heard police officers say, hitting him with my baton was like hitting concrete. Is that a human being we're talking about? Is that a human being we're talking about? No. Following that inquest, we were very concerned with the evidence given by three police officers to the extent that we lodged a further complaint with the IPCC. I'm going to give the IPCC credit where credit's due. They promptly investigated that. A file was passed to the CPS in October 2015. We are told that he sat on someone's desk at the CPS 
until February of this year. No one looked at it. Today, we are told they need another fortnight. Now, take into account it sat on someone's desk for four months and they did nothing. Shame. Say it again. Shame. The facts are at the end of the day. Black lives do not matter to people in authority because if it did, they would treat us better than how they're treating us now. And the facts are enough is enough. We as a community must not tolerate this. We are non-violent. We are peaceful, God-fearing people. Those who seek to oppress us must get it into their heads. We are no longer going to tolerate this. We want answers. How many more must die before this government, and we do thank Theresa May, who is now Prime Minister, for her efforts in highlighting the inequality. But this word disproportionality, let us ask ourselves, what is that buzzword all about? What is it all about? Stop and search, but disproportional. Section 136, we're abused, it's used to abuse us, hence disproportionality. Taser, we're disproportional. Use of CS gas, we're disproportional. Uses of excessive force, we're disproportional. And even in sentencing, we're disproportional. Hey, I've got news for everybody. God has blessed us so we are no longer on the plantation. God has blessed us so we're no longer in the cotton fields. God has blessed us that we can walk into any building that we can. God has blessed us we can walk on any street and not be linked to the nearest tree. But people are there today trying to make that happen. Why? I prayed and I said everyone is equal in the sight of God but not in the sight of man. And I have one thing to say to those that stereotype us. I have one thing to say to you. This does not make us aggressive. This does not make us a criminal. This just makes us equal as you are. Because cut my skin, cut any one of your skins, blood comes out of it. No justice. We must remember one thing. We have our own responsibilities. And one thing I'm here today to encourage everybody to do is to get involved. Get involved. Don't let those that seek to oppress us close any door on us. Last week, the Equalities and Human Rights Commission said that we now have entrenched racism. I'll tell you what, I'm waiting for the first sign to go into a house, to go into a pub, that will say no blacks, no Irish, no dogs after the responsibility of Brexit. Because you know why? That does not give us a chance unless we as a people say enough is enough and we do something about it. And in the case of Kings of Barrow, we demand an answer from the CPS. No justice. We demand that answer. We demand justice. And we demand that the police officers, and I will say this, who did not tell the truth at the inquest. We demand that those officers are brought to task. And I will say this, shame on West Midlands Police that those officers have not been suspended. Today, we call for those officers to be immediately suspended. No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! Today, we call for those officers Today, we call for those officers to be charged based on the complaint that we initiated in May 2015, which is namely perjury and perverting the course of justice. Because if we did it, we would be Winston Green now. No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! Today, we want a public inquiry. We did write to the Home Secretary. She did promise to meet with us. Unfortunately, with all the dithering from the CPS, the reports aren't complete. But we demand a public inquiry. We had systemics failing from Birmingham solely on Mental Health Trust, the NHS, 
West Midlands Ambulance Service and West Midlands Police. Four agencies that are there to serve the public. And they failed. They were found wanting. Is that not of public interest? Is that not important to Kingsley's family? Yes. To Kingsley's children? Yes. I have heard on this journey we must take into consider the officers' families. Of course we do, but we're the only ones that considers anyone's family. Who's, who's considered Kingsley's family? Who's Nobody. considered the impact on his children? Nobody. No one. Absolutely no one. And today we are highlighting this. And enough is enough. I fear when my own children go to a party. Yes, there are other factors out there. Of course there are. Our streets aren't safe as they should be. But do you know what? When the conduct of those who are called in to protect and serve us is called into question, and many of the decisions are based on the colour of your skin, that becomes an issue. And finally, I will say this. During the Kings of Burrell inquest, we heard something called the three Bs. Big, black, bad. Black, bad. How many police officers that can tell me right now that they don't believe that when they are confronted by a black man? How many? Do you know what? Stop stereotyping us. Do serious soul searching. And West Midlands Police, you only have one option to deal with racists. Don't train them. Don't send them to a management meeting. Sack them. Yes. Sack them. Have the audacity to sack them. Because I will tell you this. It is so easy to sack a black person. It is so easy to discipline a black person. But when we have white police officers who are openly racist, openly lying, and they are still receiving wages, that is the disgrace. And as far as I'm concerned, my message to the Chief Constable today, sack them. Any officer that stereotypes a black person, forget the word disproportional. Any officer that is racist towards a black person, sack them. It's simple, let's say it. Sack them. 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 We're running out of patience, man. That's all we do. We're here to rally, we're here to protest, and as far as I'm concerned, we want answers. We want movement, and we want justice. Yes. What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Justice! What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! When do we want it? Now!